Hi and welcome to the next basic Blofel tutorial. The last time we talked about the filters and this time we are going to talk about the envelopes and the LFOs. We start with the basic sound and first we talk about the envelopes. In the Blaufeld there are four envelopes for every sound, for every patch, but actually for every voice. The first two are right here on the panel. They are the filter envelope and the amp envelope. You can access them by pressing this button and you see which light is on and this indicates which um, menu page is here on the display and which setting can be changed with these four knobs. As you see the settings attack, decay, sustain and release can be manipulated for the, the filter envelope and the amp envelope with these four buttons or knobs. Okay, the filter envelope is called filter envelope because it is routed directly to the filters. You see um, this parameter here. <clears throat> By selecting an envelope and changing this value you can change the amount, how much the filter envelope is controlling the cutoff of the selected filter. Let's try it. The filter envelope is always rooted to the filters. If you don't want this envelope to control the cutoffs, you have to set this amount to zero. But there's no other way to um, um, to cut this connection. It is always connected. But of course, you can also um, modulate the cutoff with other modulators and of course you can use the filter envelope also as a modulator for other parameters but this link between the filter envelope and the filters is always active there is a similar case with the amp envelope it is always rooted to the internal amp or the volume of the voice so this envelope here, the amp envelope, is always controlling the volume. The other two envelopes, envelope 3 and 4, can only be accessed in the menu pages, as you see here, envelope 3 and 4. The four envelopes are very similar. You have different parameters here, as you see the, the trigger mode with a normal trigger, Every key is triggering its um, its own envelope, and with single, um, there is actually just one envelope, and every key is triggering this one envelope, so that, um, for instance, when you're controlling the filter cutoff with this envelope, you open the the cutoff 
by every key hit for every um every voice which is um, active in this moment and here on the next side you have the envelope mode i think you know um this classical adsr mode which is attack decay sustain release as we heard it just now But there are also other modes like ADS DSR and one shot loop loop all and they seem a bit strange but when you look on the next pages you can understand what these other types do. For the normal ADSR mode, these parameters like attack level, DK2, sustain2 actually do nothing. But for the other modes, like this one, you can change the settings and you get very complex and interesting different envelope types. For instance, you get very interesting results when you modulate the wavetable number with such a complex envelope. Um, the name one shot seems a bit strange because actually every envelope should be somehow one shot because um, a normal envelope is not looping or uh, does not something uh, does not do something similar like like a loop or repeating so every envelope should be one shot but what Waldorf mean um, by one shot is that um, this envelope has no sustain um, face in in the whole envelope so that you cannot hold the key it is always starting here with an attack it has decay 1 decay 2 and release but no sustain um, point so that you cannot hold the key Okay, and there are the loop modes, which are quite interesting because they behave a little bit like LFOs. So when you're running out of LFOs, you can also use these loop modes of the envelopes, like for envelope 3 and 4, to get uh, modulators which behave similar like LFOs. is working similar to that, but it contains the attack and the release also.
there's just one more thing within the M envelope. It has this parameter. And this is the same parameter like in the oscillators. It controls if your patch or your sound is polyphonic or monophonic. So when you turn this to mono, you cannot play chords anymore. And this is the normal mode where you can hit multiple keys at once. So this parameter here is just exactly the same parameter like in the LFO section. Okay, now I turn off this control here. Now the cutoff is no more controlled by any modulators. And because there's no need to explain the other envelopes like um, amp, LFO 3 and 4, because they are working the same like the filter envelope, I go on with the LFO. And for this I show how to control um, the filter cutoff with an LFO. You go here in the filter menu and you see the modulation source, LFO 1 in this case, and the amount. And this is quite nice to show how the LFOs work. The Blowfield has three LFOs. You can control the shape and the speed of LFO 1 and 2 right here on the panel, and LFO 3 is hidden in the menu pages. So when you scroll through the menu pages, you see LFO3 here. And um, all three um, LFOs are working um, exactly equally. So it's enough to explain LFO1 in this case. Let's start with um, these parameters here. First you have the speed here on the right side. It can be quite fast. And you have the shape on the left side. The difference between random and sample and hold is that the random LFO um, chooses random points and it is connecting these points directly. And the speed is just the number of these points per time. And the sample and hold LFO is also choosing random points, but it is not um, connecting these points, but it is holding so that you get these kind of steps as the modulation source. Okay, on the next menu page, you see the parameters sync and clocked. Sync um, describes if 
um, if um, every key or every voice has its own LFO, or if the blowfield is behaving like it would have just one LFO one. I um, I show you this behavior with um, with a chord with sync off. Every key has its own LFO. With sync on, there's just one LFO active. Okay, and the second parameter is the clocked parameter. When you put the clock on, you have not a free speed number, but it is um, connected to um, or um, quantized to, to bars. But you should know that the LFOs cannot be synchronized with an external MIDI clock. Okay, here on the next page we have the start phase and the key track. Well, I start with the key track. Um, the key track says um, which key is causing which LFO speed. With a positive value, um, the lower notes have a slower LFO and the higher notes have a faster LFO, just like this. And of course you can also choose a negative value. The start phase is defining at which point the LFO starts when you hit the key. With the start phase free, the LFO could start at any point of this wave. So when I hit multiple keys and the start phase is free, you get a different starting result for every key. But you can also choose every point within the wave as um, the starting point. With zero degrees you start um, right here. With 90 degrees you start at the maximum. And so on. And the last page of the LFO has a delay and a fade parameter. Delay says um, at which point the LFO starts. Um, with its modulation. So you can set a time where there's no modulation and then it suddenly starts. So you hear um, when I hit the key there is some time without modulation and then it starts suddenly. Okay. And the fade is just the fade in of the LFO. So when I hit the key, there's no modulation, then a bit more and again a bit more until it reaches its maximum.
And of course, you can combine the both parameters. You can also get interesting results by defining some delay and then changing the starting phase just as you need it. And there's another trick. You can use the LFOs to get um, random constant modulation um, values for every key. For this, you have to choose the random, uh, the, the sample and hold shape, set the speed to zero, and the start phase to three. Now you get a different constant value for every key hit. This is because the start phrase is free, so you get a different starting value for every key hit, and because the speed is completely down, it holds exactly this value as long as you hold the key. Of course, this trick works similar for other um, shape um, parameters, but um, actually the speed zero is not exactly zero, but a little bit above zero. So that with other shapes you get a little bit of movement. Okay, that's all for the envelopes and the LFOs. If you want to say something, if you have more ideas for other videos, if you want to comment, just write um, something beneath the video, make a like or dislike, and thanks for watching and have a nice day.